Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. In today's episode, we're going to preview the Penguins-Bruins game on Thursday. The Penguins will finally return to action after a five-day break, a break that they definitely, I think, have needed. I would not be surprised if they come out flying in that one, to say the least. We're also going to go over um, I, this goaltending conundrum that I've been seeing on social media a little bit lately and a couple other things I have planned as well. So look for all that coming up right after this drop. Your Locked On Penguins, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes, remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can also follow the show's Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. I was wearing my Nationals hat here, but um, they won two in a row, and then they have obviously just they fell to the Diamondbacks tonight. So we're going to wear it backwards uh, today. I don't need to show that. They're 6-8 and eight right now. They also just lost three out of four to the Pirates. So for all of you that listen to the show that are Pirates fans, and maybe you guys all listen to Ethan at Locked On Pirates. He does a great job. Um, definitely, I think, a little embarrassing there for my Nats that they lost a series to um the Pirates, to say the least. Anyways, you all want to check out the Pirates, go check out Ethan Smith of Lockdown Pirates. He does a tremendous job over there with that show, especially with a team that's probably not going to be that good this year. But anyway, so Penguins Bruins Part 3, a very mini home and home series. And, you know, it ends on Thursday. I'm trying to make sure my dog does not start whining. And is he going to lay down? Yes, he will. Um, Thrawn is just, he somehow sometimes wakes up. And then the, whenever I'm recording and, you know, I guess that's right now. Anyways, again, back to my overall point. I have no idea. That that's like the third time I've been sidetracked, including this one, whatever. We'll just get right into it. Um, so the Penguins, they obviously fell on Saturday two to one in Boston in TD Garden. Usually it's a building that's not kind to them, though. Funny enough, they had one two in a row going into that time. But, you know, the Penguins, in order for them, I think, to win this game, you know, they have to just play the way they did for those final 57 to 58 minutes. I know it was a very low event game. The Penguins were held to 24 shots. That's usually not the norm this year. The Penguins are usually one of the best, you know, volume shooting teams in the league. And it's it's funny, I, you know, I say that, but yet there are so many times where they do overpass. So they could have a lot more shots per game than what they have right now. But, you know, still, you know, sometimes they'll just want to Harlem Globetrotter it and, you know, or not shoot on two-on-ones and stuff like that. But those final 57 to 58 minutes, from what I was able to watch back, I really thought the Penguins played a very sound defensive game. They got some quality chances. Danton Hine was able to make it two to one in the second period. There was still plenty of time for that rest of that game, but they just couldn't find the bounce. I credit Jeremy Swimmon. He played really well. Um, I assume that he is going to get the start um, in this one. Linus Allmark. Um, is still hurt. Hampus Lindholm, he is also not going to be in the lineup. David Pasternak, and yeah, as I go on left wing lock right here, Olmark has been ruled out through Friday at least. Tomas Nosek um, may also not be playing as well. I believe he was in the game. He was in the lineup. Um, he was in the lineup on Saturday, but was not in the, the lineup uh, the other night. Um, I don't think against the uh, St. Louis Blues. The Bruins were able to win that game, a rematch of the 2019 Stanley Cup Final, 3-2. Charlie McAvoy got the game winner. You know, this is still a pretty dangerous Boston team. I mean, again, you know, Marshawn with Bergeron on the top line. Jake DeBrusque is having a really good year after it was weird that he got signed a contract extension for a player that had requested a trade out of Boston to then say, yeah, I'm going to resign with them. But then his, his agent also said, yeah, the trade request still stands. So I'm like, I guess that's maybe something they're going to figure out um, in the offseason, to say the least. So don't really know what's going on with that, but that's still a pretty good top line. Taylor Hall, he's always very dangerous. Dangerous, excuse me. Don't know what the heck I just said with that first word. Eric Hall is a good second line center. Charlie Coyle, Craig Smith, a player that I've long loved. I wa I've wanted probably Craig Smith to be a Penguin like 5,000 times. Um, I think he was on the block a couple of times at the deadline. I remember when he was a free agent. That was about a year, year and a half ago, I'm pretty sure. I was advocating on my Twitter account for the Penguins to go after him. I then saw the Boston Bruins signed him to, it was like three years, nine point something million total. He's only getting like three million a year. And I'm just like, the Penguins really couldn't do that for one of the best volume shooters in the league for a team. At that point, you know, they were not putting up as many shots as they are 
right now. Definitely, I think a little bit puzzling. I guess it was just because of their their salary cap situation. But man, you know, he is a very good bottom six winger to have. Trent Frederick, he opened the scoring that last game. You know, he's always a good bottom line winger. Nick Foligno, um, McLaughlin on the fourth line. Charlie McAvoy, of course. Matt Grizzly, Mike Riley defensively. Brandon Carlo, it looks like he's going to be back. Um, you know, again, this is this is a damn damn good Bruins team. Um, I would not be surprised if they were to win a round or two in the playoffs. But again, you know, for the Penguins to win this game, you know, just they they have to. I think they do have to forecheck a bit better than what they did overall. Um, and like, you know, I was like, I was sitting on my phone there. Um, you know, I, I liked what they did those final fifty seven to fifty eight minutes, but I feel like they could have done a lot better. Um, and you know, they're coming off a five day break. Their, their legs are going to be refreshed. You got five more games left before the games really start to matter. This was a perfect time, I think for a break, even though Tristan Jari is still hurt. And, you know, I'll get to an update on that um, <clears throat> a little later on in this episode, but you know, it just, I think this plays into the Penguins advantage because the Bruins, you know, they've been continuing to play. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I shouldn't say a brutal schedule, but you know, their, their legs aren't going to be as fresh as the Penguins legs are. Um, <clears throat> for this game. So I like the Penguins in that category. I also like how the Penguins usually have played the Bruins at home over the years. They have a much better record against them at home compared to on the road. Um, last year, I think it was one of their first, reg- the Bruins beat them in regulation for like one of the first times, I think, um, in, in a few years, um, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, this is all, this is going to be a tough game. I would not be surprised if it goes in extra session. But again, you know, the Penguins, they also can't start out the game against Boston the way they did on Saturday. You know, they, they did not have their legs those first couple of minutes. Boston jumps on them. It's 2 nothing, And, you know, now, now you have to play from behind the final 58 minutes. If you only give up a goal there, um, you know, that game is probably going to overtime where it's a true 50-50. And, you know, who, who knows what happens there, to say the least. So... You know, they just, they cannot play sloppy defensively in those opening minutes. They got to get a better, they got to get some saves, I think, from Casey DeSmith um, when they need them. I know he played a lot better down the stretch of those final 57 to 58 minutes. I will praise him for that. Shout out to him. Um, But, you know, I think that first goal, he definitely could have had back. The second one, I think, was just a bad bounce. Um, You know, I said it on my one of my episodes this week. When the Penguins are playing a little sloppier than normal, um, sometimes you need your goalie to bail you out. And he wasn't able to do that after those first couple of minutes. If he was able to do that, that's probably a completely different game. So I'm definitely going to be watching that for the Penguins on Thursday at home. Um, and, and, you know, I just, again, I said this on my Tuesday episode, in case you all did not listen. I, I want to see me these last five games, especially this one. Is the process there? You know, is it going to yield the results that the team you know deserves, or is it going to yield a result you know that the team does not deserve? You know, I think that's more important than you know getting all mad about. Oh my God, they're going to play this team in the playoffs. Oh my God, they're going to play this other team. I don't want to play this team. And blah 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 blah. You know, you have a thirty three point three percent chance of getting it right between the Rangers, the Hurricanes, and the Panthers. The Penguins are going to have to go through good teams if in order to make a run. Even if Tristan Jari is not ready for the start of the Stanley Cup Finals, but Stanley Cup Playoffs, excuse me, that is the reality of the situation. I am more curious to see overall how they're playing, how do the numbers look, what is the eye test telling me, and you know, but let's see. You know, it's important to play good hockey going into the playoffs. These last five games, it, I, I'm not going to say it's a full cupcake schedule, but it is a favorable schedule for the Penguins. You know, this game is the toughest of them all. This is a Boston team that. You know, they're right there in the standings, only two points ahead of the Penguins. A regulation win for this game ties them. I know Boston has a game in hand, but that's still a big deal. If the Penguins were to slide down only to the uh, only top wildcard spot, I know they would get Carolina, but they would also not have to slide down to the second wildcard spot and play the Florida Panthers, even though, in my opinion, that is a better matchup for the Penguins than playing the Carolina Hurricanes. But that is my preview for the game on Thursday. Starting out faster, the vibe check is going to be very important for checking much more aggressively, getting more shots um, to just also, you know, getting to the high danger areas, you know, in that game on Saturday, I didn't really notice the Penguins doing that a lot, even though when they were down two to one after Danton Heinen got his 17th goal, um, just a very dull rest of the game. I know, again, I know Raquel had a couple glorious chances, but you know, when the game got tight, it really tight, excuse me, in the third period, the Penguins just, you know, they, they weren't there. Um, I don't think, or they weren't, you know, just, 
getting gaining a lot of offensive pressure um, as I've seen in the past from them in those situations. So curious to see how that turns out as well. And defensively, you know, with the new pairs, how is that going to be? Um, is Brian Dumoulin going to play better with Chris Letang? That's a million-dollar question. Um, we'll see if John Marino can turn it around a little bit with his usual partner, Marcus Patterson. And then, then Matheson or Weedle is always a very reliable third pairing. So those are my thoughts on, <clears throat> excuse me, the preview um, for the game against the Bruins. Now, Let's get to HelloFresh. You can get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. Ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in under a week, so they always arrive fresh, all without a trip to the grocery store or a farmer's market. HelloFresh chefs really know how to diversify the menu, and with seasonal rep- recipes like salmon limon and pasta primavera, you can also pick your favorites from 50 different weekly options and skip weeks when you need to. You can also change your delivery date or update your preferences all in the HelloFresh app. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use that code LockedOn16 to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Remember, HelloFresh.com slash LockedOn16 and use lock code LockedOn16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. All right, we're back on this episode of the Locked on Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Hunter Hodes. Follow the show Twitter at LO underscore Penguins. And I'm just typing something in here on my PC. Now, there was an interesting debate that I saw today um, on Penguins Twitter. And it was just about, you know, the goaltending conundrum. Well, you know, some fans are just freaking out. Just the Penguins didn't do enough of the goaltending position. And, you know, my, my take on that is... It, you know, it, it's tough because in January and February, I was definitely arguing for the team to go out and get a backup goaltender. I thought that was the biggest need at the time over a top six winger. Then Casey DeSmith actually started to turn his season around. You know, he has had, he had some really nice starts, um, was looking like the Casey DeSmith that we saw last year that was right around a league average to a little bit of an above league average goaltender. Um, and then that, that kind of went down a little bit. And the Penguins made their move at the deadline. They went out and got Ricard Raquel for a couple of bottom six forwards, a prospect and a second round pick. And you know, I, and now some people are already saying, well, the pet wasn't enough. Why didn't the Penguins prepare for something like this with Tristan Jari going down? Now they have to, have to go to Casey to Smith. And I'm like, okay, I think you can kind of miss me a little bit with the trade deadline thing because you know, personally, I changed my tune after I saw DeSmith um you know turn his game around. And also there weren't a lot of goaltenders available at the deadline for the Penguins to pursue. I mean, Mark Andre Fleury was, you know was mainly the only one that got moved. Well, I, I guess Scott Wedgwood too. Um, you know, I would have been fine with the Penguins getting him, but they, they trusted Casey to Smith a bit more at the time. That's fair. He'd been playing pretty good, I think, um, during then. He's been, I think, mostly fine for this last month as well. But, I mean, I don't really think anyone could have predicted this coming. I mean, he was basically almost played a fully healthy season. The playoffs were two weeks away. I mean, it was just a freak accident with what happened with Anders Lee and Chris Tang right in front of him. Um, had that not happened, you know, he'd be fully healthy right now and he'd be ready to really write um, this redemption story. But at the end of the day, you know, they're just, again, there wasn't really a lot of goaltending options available for the Penguins at the deadline. And, you know, with what they were working on with the Ricard Raquel trade, they just did not have the assets to also go out and get a goaltending, uh, another goaltender. Now, if you would have wanted to argue with me that they should have gone out and gotten someone to back up Tristan um, during the off season, I will gladly listen to that argument. I always said, you know, during the offseason going into this year, that it was going to be very risky to run this tandem back. You know, Tristan, you know, I, I guess I, I understood at the time because his value was at an all-time low, but I felt like they needed to go out and get a veteran that can, you know, just be a stopgap option because Casey did Smith, you know, for as you know decent as he was last year, again, league average, maybe a little bit above league average goaltender, it was a relatively small sample size. And for the first half, almost a little, maybe a little over first half of the year, he was not good. Um, I know he was able to turn it around and, you know, maybe work on th- some things with the goaltending coach, but, you know, he was looking like a bad bet. I should say at the time, you know, there were plenty of goaltending options available um, over the off season that they could have gone out um, and got, you know, Peter Morozik. I mean, Toronto had to pay a little more term that I think I would have liked. Um, they weren't going to go out and sign Philip Grubauer. I mean, Darcy Kemper would have been nice, but I mean, do they have a Connor Timmons available to trade for him? No, uh, they do not. Um, but, you know, they, they probably could have signed someone or even traded for someone. That's a little bit cheap. Um, I think if you wanted to single out or, or call out Ron Hextall for not doing that, 
Um, in my opinion, that's totally fair. But I do think it's a little unfair as of right now with how Casey DeSmith has played down the stretch, um, excuse me, and with how Tristan has mostly played this year, um, to say that, well, the Penguins, they didn't prepare for this at the trade deadline. They should have gone out and gotten him and not Raquel or gotten a goaltender plus Ricard Raquel when the Penguins probably just didn't have the assets um, to do it. And, you know, just at the time, the Penguins goaltending was humming along pretty well. I think that was before Tristan's numbers started to dip a little bit. And it was also around the time when I think DeSmith was really saving his job, um, at least in my opinion. So um, I'm not going to harp on Hextall too much for this. Though, again, I, I do think if you want to harp on him a little bit after what happened in the offseason with not going out and getting a reliable backup uh, for Tristan, um, I, I think that's a little more fair, um, at, at least to me. Um, that, 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 that's how I see it. Um, I am currently checking the score for the Capitals uh, Vegas Golden Knights game because it was 1 1 last I checked. And it is now. 2-1 Washington, and of course Ovechkin got his 49th goal of the year. Vegas is basically on life support right now. Hopefully they can somehow pull this off. Um, but you know, those are my thoughts on that little goaltending, you know, conundrum that I've been seeing on Penguins Twitter. Um, you know, again, at the end of the day, do I have confidence in Casey DeSmith winning a playoff series? No, I don't think anyone in this uh, fan base probably does. Uh, I saw a couple of takes on you know social media today. For those that are not on it, I'll say here that you know Casey was playing better than Tristan down the stretch. I don't think that's true at all. I mean, I think Casey's been fine, but I think you know Tristan's also been mostly pretty good. Um, I know his numbers have gone down a little bit. You know, I think it's mainly to him being gassed, um, wasn't making the saves that he normally was in the first half of the year. But I still think he was playing at a higher level than Tristan. Um, I'll, I'll say that. Um, that's for sure. So, you know. Again, at, 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 you know, at the end of the day here, you know, what, what are you going to do? You know, this is the hand that Penguins have been dealt. It's just, it's really sh shitty timing uh, to say the least. And, you know, for an update on Tristan Jolly, the Penguins had their team photo today. Um, and speaking of that, if any of you all click that team photo, Brian Burke and Ron Hextall were definitely Photoshopped into their graphic. The, whoever runs their graphic design team, kudos to you. Shout outs. Um, Brian Burke is apparently wearing a tie. In that photo, uh, Brian Burke does not wear ties. That was the most obvious uh, Photoshop I think I have ever seen in my life. Kudos to you all, whoever. If you all listen, if some of if some of you all listen to this show, just know that I love you. Um, and that was a perfect little Photoshop. There is no way Brian Burke is taking a picture um, with a tie that is actually tied, um, to say the least. But um, Dave Molinari was reporting this morning that Tristan had to be pushed onto the ice. Um, in a chair with a cast on his foot. And then I think people were seeing him right off in a scooter. So yeah, again, th this confirms he has a broken foot. Um, it, it, it doesn't sound good. I know Mike Sullivan threw some cold water that DeSmith is definitely going to be the starter come playoff time. I mean, that, that's just coach speak, people. I mean, like, what, what do you want here? I mean, he's not going to come out and say, oh yeah, I mean, you know, Tristan Jari has no shot of coming back. He's, he, you know, he's blah, 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 blah. I mean, they have a timeline of week to week. They're going to stay to that, even though um, it doesn't look good right now. We'll have to see if he gets back onto the ice before game one, I'll be a little more optimistic, but until that happens, um, in my opinion, I just, I don't think he's going to be playing or I don't think he's going to be ready um, to say the least, but um, still a little more to get to for this episode of the Lockdown Penguins podcast. But before we get to that, have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallow. They're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Hell, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, the Puffs are included with those. They are low calorie and high protein. Replace your candy bars with those as well. Heck, they are better than candy bars. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. You can go to Built.com and scroll down to the macro chart. You will be blown away by what you see. High protein, low calorie, high fiber, and low carb. Most Built Bars, most built bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. You can go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Now, this is one of the final times we're going to do this. As promised, here are some selections for our Mattress Factory Museum Twitter prompts in an official response from the museum. When prompted, art is a sport. Um, one said, well, what if you're already a season ticket holder? That comes from Josh G. Uh, 
Josh Yin's to which Mattress Factory says, uh, you probably have better seats than this group of reserved tickets. You can share our post with your hockey buddies so you can all do both together. Also, that didn't answer the question, so we're going to assume that you agree that art is a sport. Now, there's a no so I also did post another poll that asked you for your gut reaction that sports are art or art is a sport. Um, sports are art won by a landslide, but with two votes for art as a sport, I think we might be onto something here. Mattress Factory says, full disclosure, one of those votes was on us. We're really happy someone agreed. DM us and we will snag a beer at the game. Remember, all of this comes from Mattress Factory, Pittsburgh's premier site-specific contemporary arts installations museum. That's just a fancy way to say actually immersive art. You can visit mattress.org slash go pens to get a free one-year membership to Mattress Factory when you buy tickets to tomorrow night's game against the Boston Bruins, Pens Bruins, April 21st. All right, we're back here on this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I am your host, Hunter Hodes. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. Follow the show's Twitter at L underscore Penguins. I am keeping tabs on this Washington Vegas game. Um, if Washington wins tonight, they'll be tied in games played, and they will be one point up on the Penguins. So uh, it's it, it, it. This is going to be something. We'll have to see if Vegas can somehow pull something out of their butts here. I'm going to say the least on this. This Vegas team is. I, I mean, I think they're cooked um, at this point. So again, you know, I'm 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 really eager to see the team um, finally coming off this five day break. Um, you know, the the playoffs are. I, I'm I'm so giddy for this time of year, man. I mean, I, all the I was watching some of the videos from old uh, playoff series this morning while I was working, and you know, just seeing the igloo so loud and you know game three crystal tangs overtime winner i was watching highlights uh, i've watched this game so many times before you know penguins red wings game three and four at the, at the igloo and just seeing that atmosphere there um is second to none and you know knowing that that hopefully that kind of atmosphere is gonna be back at ppg in just a little under two weeks is so exciting um i love the playoffs um i've always loved them and you know hopefully the penguins can somehow pull something out here and have a special run. I don't want another first round exit. Um, that, that's for sure. I mean, at, at least in my opinion. So, um, you know, it, it all starts for these these last five games. You know, they're important, even though, um, well, they don't mean too much, but they're still important with that you want to see the team at least playing well and getting some results. You know, some of these teams that they're playing, you know, they're basically packing again, again, like the Detroit Red Wings, they're not good, the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, they're basically openly tanking at this point. The Columbus Blue Jackets are eliminated. Um, you know, you have the Edmonton Oilers who are, are a playoff team. They're going to get in. I still think the Penguins can win that game. And, you know, even for this Bruins game, um, I still think the Penguins can de definitely um, do something here. Um, but overall, you know, I'm just I'm curious to see all aspects of the team. You know, how can the penalty can the penalty kill also continue to build off its momentum? Um, it's one of the been one of the three best penalty kills all year. Credit to Mike Vellucci. I was really sour on him. After last year, because the PK was one of the worst units in the league, um, he made some adjustments over this offseason. And, you know, shout out to him because, you know, I was almost ready to cut ties with him if this wasn't going to get better, um, to say the least. I want to see if the power play can also get out of the funk. I think when Evgeny Malkin comes back after that game on Thursday, that's going to be a huge help, at least, uh, you know, at least in my opinion. Um, it's, you know, it's been a, just a, barely been scoring any power play goals lately. And, you know, again, that just goes to show how important Evgeny Malkin is um, just on that right hash. So, you know, very exciting time of year. I hope you all continue to listen to the show. I have a full game recap coming up on Thursday for Penguins Bruins. And then Friday, we're going to preview the two games over the weekend between the Detroit Red Wings and the Philadelphia Flyers and also touch on a couple of other things that I have planned for that episode. So thank you all so much for listening to this ep to this episode. I know the third segment was a little all over the place. Um, st still wanted to you know touch on again, again, a few things that I have planned. I'm glad I was able to do that. Um, but thank you all so much for listening again, and I will be back on Thursday.